is Magna Grath. I'm an RN here on 6 West Otolaryngology. The purpose of this video is to provide a broad overview for you and your family of what to expect during your hospitalization. In this video, we'll go over a variety of topics about tracheostomies and total laryngectomies. On behalf of the ENT team, I'd like to welcome you to the University of Virginia Medical Center. We are very grateful that you've chosen us to guide you through this chapter of your life. With a normal functioning airway, air passes through your nose and your mouth through your trachea into your lungs when you breathe. With a tracheostomy, a tube is placed into your trachea so that when you breathe, air flows directly through your trachea and into your lungs. The function of a tracheostomy tube is to maintain your airway and to allow the removal of tracheal secretions. A tracheostomy tube consists of two parts, the outer cannula and the inner cannula. The outer cannula is the outer tube that holds the stoma open. It may be secured with a trach tie or it may be sutured in place. The inner cannula locks into the outer tube and can be removed for cleaning. The normal postoperative course consists of a 3-9 to nine day stay depending on your surgery. For all ENT patients, the goals after surgery are preventing postoperative infections by monitoring surgical sites and using antibiotics, controlling your pain, walking with physical and occupational therapy, resuming your home diet without complication, or becoming confident in self-administration of tube feeds, and becoming confident with your new trach, cleaning, and suctioning. You may be in a couple different locations before you arrive to the acute care ENT floor. Some patients will go to the ICU after surgery, where they will be closely monitored using cardiac monitoring and performing frequent assessments. In the ICU, they have a one to two or one-to-one -one nurse to patient ratio. They also may go to the MU where they have a three-to-one patient to nurse ratio. In every unit, call bells are devices that patients use to notify their nurse. When you push the red button on the call bell, a light will come on in front of your room, indicating that you have called. Our health unit coordinator at the front desk will answer the phone to obtain more information about what you need, and they will notify the appropriate staff member. The ENT intern and residents are always available by phone to answer questions. The ENT team rounds on their patients one to two times per day, so it is important to communicate a plan of the day at the beginning of the day. Depending on the day of the week, many attendings and residents will be at the ENT clinic for most of the day, or could be doing surgeries until the afternoon. There are nurse practitioners on 6 West, the SIMU, and the SICU that work under your attendings. These practitioners will also be able to assist you with many of your questions as they are included in your plan of care for the ENT patients on the floor. RNs and PCAs will normally work a 12 or an 8 hour shift. The RN will be performing assessments during the day, looking at your incisions and facilitating your education about your trach, and assessing your comfort with your trach. Your PCA will take your vitals every 4 hours and can assist you with many of your daily needs, like helping you get up and moving, taking you to the bathroom, assisting with meals, emptying drains, getting you up in the morning and getting you ready for bed. Respiratory therapists will be assessing your need for suctioning, oxygen requirements, and helping your RNs with trach teaching. They will come and assess you regularly and communicate any changes to the nurse and ENT team. Physical therapy and occupational therapy is a very important during your hospital stay. Your therapist will do an initial evaluation on your mobility and will recommend any discharge needs to the ENT team. So the case manager is a really important um, resource for new trach patients. They'll start following um, you right after surgery and they'll go into your room, introduce themselves, figure out what you individually need. Um, they'll look at your insurance and see if the equipment can be covered and if not they'll figure out other ways to get you your equipment. Um, they also can look at placement options if home isn't safe for you. Um, that's fine, they can figure out where you can go so you're safe. The social worker is another resource, kind of similar to case manager, but she'll come by your room and she goes over more like the basic needs. She'll make sure that you're safe at home, that your home environment is okay for you to go home to, and um, they also have other resources that us nurses maybe don't have. I had a recent social worker that 
brought in a lifelong trach patient for my new trach patient and just went over um, how his life is and how he's happily living with a trach and answered any questions that um, new patient had that maybe ease any of his concerns. So they're a really good resource and they're both there for you up on the unit um, and we can get a hold of them at any time if you need them. Jackson brought drains placed um, during the surgical procedure and they're, they're placed under the skin to drain off extra fluid that um, accumulates um, from damage to the tissue. It's an, um, an inflammatory process that happens when you cut skin. Those drains look like a little bulb um, and some people have more than one, some people may have one, some people may have four or five um, and they're normally to suction and we empty them two to three times a day and um, the drainage will decrease the longer you have it and um, the goal is to get those drains out before you leave the hospital. Um, nine times out of ten you will leave the hospital with your drains removed. On the rare occasion most patients, some patients will go home with one drain in place. Foley catheters and dwelling catheters is placed in your urethra to drain your bladder while you're in, while, um, you're in surgery. Normally those folies will come out when you're out of bed the next day or even the day of surgery. If you're really getting up and moving around, we like to get those out as soon as possible. When we take them out, we do, you'll hear that your nurse is talking about something, uh, mention something and call a voiding trial. You'll notice that um, the nurses or the patient care techs may come in and do some bladder scanning to see how much urine you have in your bladder to make sure you're emptying or make sure you're not retaining too much urine that could over distend your bladder, which can cause other issues like not being able to completely eliminate. The PEG tube is, all, is placed uh, directly into your stomach and those are used for a long, uh, when you need, may need a longer course of um, feeding um, through a external source other than taking food through your mouth. So those tubes are normally put in, um, in the, they, are, they are put in, in the OR or in a, in a surgical procedure area and they're um, in for um, a minimum of six months and then they can be taken out depending on if um, your surgeon is okay with you eating by mouth if you take enough, enough calories and to make sure you're healing after your surgery or they can be long-term for life. When you are new at tube feeding we will start you out with continuous tube feeds which are administered through a pump that allows them to go continuously at a slow rate. This allows your body to get used to the tube feeds you will be seen by a nutritionist who will look at the amount of tube feeds you've tolerated and will recommend a type of supplement that gives you the right amount of nutrition and calories specific to your body. Your nurse will demonstrate administering medications, food, and fluids through your feeding tube. They will walk you through this process until eventually you become comfortable with giving yourself feedings and medications. It is important that you become comfortable with this as you will administer tube feeds to yourself between three to six times per day. In the hospital, we have a resource packet for tracheostomy patients. Um, it goes through all the different learning points that we've gone over in this video, such as the anatomy of the trach, how to suction yourself, administering tube feeds. Um, the discharge packet goes through all the equipment you might need, like suction machine, red rubber catheters, um, anything else that you specifically need for when you go home. So the nurse will go over that with you in detail um, to make sure that you're comfortable before discharge. Lastly, I just want to thank you for choosing UVA. We hope this video has been helpful to you in learning how to manage this new airway and that you feel safe and well prepared. Thank you for letting us be a part of this journey.